guest, this UN ambassador, comes from Algeria. It's a country that has 30 million people and is the largest country in Africa. It has a huge, huge area. And in the middle of that area, there, are, there is a region called the Ares Mountains. And this is really, really, really a story that impacted me because he told me that these mountains, there lives there a small civilization that has been in existence since year 7000 BC and they are still alive and they have been in existence for nine years old now and they have inherited all to the new generation including him. He's an avatar by the way. So he calls himself an Arishan and his new company, Aresia, his new project, will give farmers of Algeria the possibility to have water because it turns that thousands of families in Algeria do not have electricity and the water is there in the ground and in the river and they cannot get it because they don't have, they don't have the mean to get it. They don't have the energy to get it. So his determination is to give those farmers solar panels and the mechanism to take this water off the ground so they can survive, sustain themselves, sustain their families, and guess what? Create jobs, and he knows how. Let's hear from Taki Edine Jafal from Algeria. Thank you, Oscar. You've definitely given me more than I deserve. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum, azul filawan. What I just said is peace be upon you in the Arabic language and hi everyone in the original language of the North African indigenous population. Ladies and gentlemen, counselors, young leaders, Pittsburgh citizens, and the millions of people watching us online, okay, maybe more of couple of hundreds. <laughs> thousands? Okay, let's not make K mad. The thousands of people watching us online, thank you for giving me a chance to stand before you with my fellow speakers and deliver our words, words that we hope are not going to stay here, words that we hope you're going to take back home with you and translate them into positive youth actions and movements. Now, really quickly, I want to see a raise of hands. Let's do this really quick. Of how many of you have planted maybe, let's say, 10 trees in the past year? Well, I see some hands. Let's go down to five. How many have planted five trees in the last year? Okay, that's six, seven. Okay, one tree. That's more like 20 to 50. Okay, so uh, here is the deal. Since we're here making challenges anyway, I challenge each and every one of you, when you go back to your home country, before spring 2013 ends, to plant at least 10 trees and motivate 9 or 10 other people of your community to plant those trees. We will end up with 120,000 trees. That's almost as many trees as I have in my backyard. I live in a jungle. So let's get back to the subject. The environment nowadays is in greater crisis when compared to 1992 when the first uh, Rio summit was held to wake up the earth on this crisis. And I think that all of us believe that with no doubt we need to take actions and we need to promote the pledges and the outcomes of the Rio uh, that just happened this year in Brazil and of the Kyoto Protocol because we are in a critical moment right now. And if we do not do that, if we do not follow this ambitious goal, then no 40% of fossil fuel subsidies will be reduced by the year 2020. Anyway, so right now we're in a network of 1,200 delegates and ambassadors from over 180 countries, with each of us bringing his or her, or her own experience to the table. Not like any news report that you have ever heard before when they tell you their success stories or their failures. It has a personal touch that would make you feel as if you were a part of their stories. I am so happy and glad that can, we can take advantage of this summit. Now let me tell, tell you about uh, my story with Project Orisia. 
It is basically a solar powered pump for irrigation to be used by the majority of farmers in Algeria and Africa to irrigate their crops. Uh, farmers who do not have access to electricity and uh, farmers who have to use the diesel pumps to get the water to their crops. This project is basically a, a pump that you submerge in a well or you put in a river and instead of using the diesel generators to power it, we use solar panels. The concept is very easy. And do not tell me that no one here can do that or just because I am an engineer I can do that. No. Anyone here is capable of doing it. It is just of combining two technologies together and the product is there. Using diesel generators is very harmful for the crops and for our nature. You know a liter of uh, diesel emits about uh, 2.6 kilograms of CO2 into the air. 3.2 tons of CO2 is emitted each year from a generator that only uses 0 0.5 liters in an hour. If we use that for eight hours a day for 200 days a year, that is going to emit 3.2 tons. Now imagine the thousands, the hundreds of thousands of farmers who rely completely or partially only on these generators. How much would they emit into the air? I, uh, I was inspired for this project from my father, who is a farmer and who wanted an alternative way uh, to raise his crops, who did not want to depend on diesel anymore. And it did not take long, and with the help of some students from an electronics student club, we are there. We are in the phase of development. And in March 2013, we are going to uh, set the first product into market. Thank you. Some other thing that I want to talk about is about sustainability and sustainable development. A lot of us think that sustainability is just about the environment. I want to tell you no, it's not only about the environment. For me, sustainability is about continuity. And I want to tell you a story of this young kid that I have taught for uh, some years when I was in an English school. His name is Yasin. And this kid, when we introduced him to the word volunteering, he went home. He looked it up and he wanted to experience what volunteering feels like. So he gathered some of his friends and they started visiting hospitals, they started uh, cleaning the streets, they started doing things that made them feel they were a part of society. But what amazed me the most about this kid is when they went to an elderly house and they met with people who were 70 year old, 80 year old. You see this 14 years old kid he is not even our generation. He is the future generation talking to these people. It is a powerful moment when you see how sustainability gives back to the people who invest in youth. When you see that, it makes me want to invest in that generation after us. And it makes me demand and ask all of you to demand from the current leaders right now to invest in us and to give us a chance to be a part of the future. I am very happy that today is like no other. The uniqueness of this summit that have gathered all of us in here under this, this roof of Pittsburgh building, this and mutual understanding must not stop here. We must take the outcomes and the pledges of this event and take them back home with us and translate them into youth movements and inspiring initiatives. And now at the end, we're not there yet. And it's funny how many people would stand in the way and discourage us and tell us that you cannot get there, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to fail. And I'm sure that this happened with all of you. But the real life answer to this is we have seen our leaders commit mistakes. Our responsible leaders committing mistakes repeatedly. So why not us? Let's all together put hand in hand and show the world what we are capable of achieving. Let's make mistakes. Let's make mistakes. Let's make mistakes. Thank you. Okay.